So for this third type of uh, third type of loop, we don't actually have the loop structure like we have for the for loop and the while loop. But it's something that we call recursion, and recursion basically means you have a function, and that function calls itself um, to 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 achieve the loop. Um, there's one very special thing about recursion that 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 causes problems. You have to remember that at a certain point, the loop has the function has to not call itself, otherwise you you never exit the loop. And and that becomes what we call an infinite loop. Uh, so then you you know you go on forever, and then the the browser hangs, and eventually it will say you you know you this browser is not responding. Do you want to kill it? That kind of thing. So what I'm going to do is write a small uh, recursive function. So function multiply x y. So as the name suggests, we want this function to return x multiplied by y. Um, now you might say, well, you could just do return x times y and then that would achieve that. But yeah, that's not using recursion. Um, instead, what I'm going to do is have multiply call itself y times and add x to itself y times. You get that? So here's an example. If it was multiply 7 by 4, then basically in here it's return x plus x plus x plus x. So x would be 7 and y would be 4. Well, we're ignoring it because we're just doing 1, 2, 3, 4. So you get me? Now that will always return x times 4. So what we want to do is make it return x times y. So let's so what we do is we have that exit criteria as the first check if y equals 0 return 0 okay but then in here what we do is we call multiply x comma y minus 1 okay so that th that achieves the the looping part but it's not yet returning any value so what we want to return is x plus multiply x comma y minus 1. Let's think about a simple scenario first. Let's assume y is 1 and x is 7. Then, so in this scenario, y is 1. If y equals 0, it's not, so we'll ignore the, the rest of that line. Oh, you'll see I've put this all together in one line. You don't have to, that's nothing special. It, that's equivalent to doing this. So let me do it like that, just for consistency. So if y is 0, it won't be, it's 1. We'll skip that line. So then we call multiply, so then we call this line. And what we want, it, we're going to return, but we're going to return x, which is 7, added to multiply, blah, blah, blah. So the computer knows that it has to do this before it can add x to it and before it can do the return. So what the computer will do here is, it will first call multiply with the value of x, 7, and y minus 1, which is 1 minus 1, which is 0. So it will call multiply. Where's the multiply function? Oh, it's right here. <coughs> so it will go here. First line is checks whether y is 0. And in fact, it is this time, so it will immediately return. Now when it returns, it returns to where? Well, it returns to here, because that's the line that called multiply. So that will be what we call on the stack. I, I mentioned the stack last week, but it wasn't very last time, but it wasn't very interesting last time. This time it will get more interesting. The stack will grow. So we take the return value from multiply, which will be zero in this case, and we add it to x, which will be seven in this case, and we'll re and we'll add them together. So seven min seven plus zero and then we'll return seven. Okay, so if I do a console dot log multiply and I'll spell it wrong because I can't type this early in the morning you know, noon so if we run it the first time boom, boom, boom. reload multiply 7 okay, well that was an easy example, well now let's do something it's got more. 
uh, multiply seven times four. Well, let's run it and make sure it works. We should see seven times four, which is twenty-eight. I knew that. Now, if we set a breakpoint, let's see what it actually does. F5 to reload. So the first time we come in, X is well, we can see them all, all the values here in the watch window. Seven times four. Step. Y is not equal to zero, so we skip over that return statement, and we call return x plus multiply. Now, what will it be? Seven and three. So let's use this step in. Could hit F11, but I'm just going to click step in, and you'll see it takes us. You know, we, it looks like we jumped up a few lines, but what we've actually done is we've we've called the function again, but we've called the same function. So if I look at this thing called call stack, you'll see on the call stack <coughs> where where we are in the code, we went from the onload event into a function called loader. Um, and if I click on loader, it'll show you what line we're on inside that stack frame. So inside loader, we're actually on this line where we first called multiply. And then from there, we went to multiply. And in that stack frame, we're on this line where we do x plus multiply, blah, blah, blah. And of course, the, the topmost stack frame is where what we're currently executing right now. So y is 3. So it's not 0. So we'll jump over that. And then if I hit jump over, it actually won't jump over because I've got a breakpoint on this line. So what we've done again is we've called from within multiply, we've called multiply recursively. So you'll see now we've got three multiplies on the stack. Multiply, 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 loader, onload. Uh, I'm going to hit it again. So now we've got four multiplies on the stack. What is the value of y now? So y is one. Okay, let's do it one more time. So now we've got five multiplies on the stack, but we only want to mul multiply by four. But that's okay, because look, the value of y is zero this time. So we'll hit this return condition. Because y equals zero. So return. When we return, we go, you'll see that the stack frame reduces by one. So now we're at four and we're back here on this line so the computer remembered what line it was on when it called multiply and it knows that it was on this line this line just happens to be inside the multiply function and then we'll re and we'll step over again we're going to return again so each time this line executes the multiply function is actually returning the value of multiply to the previous copy of of multiply you'll see that if I look at the value of y now it says it's two that's because we're in the in the in in the th you know the the third time around the loop each time I call step over we we pop one thing off the off the stack and and the value of y you know changes because we're looking at the previous stack frame can see it in the variable watch at the side. So that's recursion. That's how recursion works. I'm going to do. Um, I'm going to leave it there for now, and uh, all the all this code will be in the in the in the show notes at uh, webboomer.com. And uh, next time, I'm going to do a more concrete example of using a couple of these loops in in a game scenario. How you would use a a for loop in a game and how you use um, recursion in a game. Okay.